So, uh, first of all, uh, this is um, the track is called the history of the web. Uh, uh, th this presentation is about the history of the uh, World Wide Web Consortium. It's, it's not about the history of the web as such. Um, the web could well have found its way to establishing itself as a World Wide Web even without the, the W3C. Uh, this is something that uh, we may never find out. Uh, to prepare today's presentation, we joined forces with uh, Jean-Francois Bramatic. When I say we joined forces, we joined memories huh? because, uh, let's say, this was a pre-digital archive era uh, in many places, including the European Commission, and uh, recollections trying to resurrect how things happened, what was the what were the critical points in the, in the decision making that led the stop to the creation of the World Wide Web Consortium. We intend to write this up after this event, uh, given the fact that many of, of all the other dramatis persona are kind of living this vain world. Uh, we thought with Jean Francois will we'll sit down and write it up and. Um, uh, and make it available. So uh, the story for me starts um, uh, there. in 1992. That's the first time I ever heard of of uh, of the concept of the web or of um, of Tim uh, Berners Lee, and that was through uh, Michael Dertuzos, who himself had heard about it from Dave Clark. After Dave had met uh, uh, Tim at the, at the San Diego Internet Engineering Task Force meeting in, in March of that year. Uh, before I go any further, I, 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 I want to say something because part of this, uh, let's say, uh, resurrection of the history of the World Wide Web Consortium that we did with, uh, with uh, Jean-Francois uh, was to pay homage to some people who are no longer with us and who played key roles in, in what happened. Uh, so I want to say two things. One is that uh, Michael Dertuzos, uh, at the time he was the, uh, the, the, the chair of the Laboratory of Science at, at MIT, he was also uh, my closest personal friend in life. We, we enjoyed uh, working together, being together uh, in Boston or in Greece. and. Uh, uh, this aside, my friendship with Michael aside, I, I want to say that I, I, I firmly believe that uh, there would not have been a World Wide Web consortium without his, uh, his insights and, and his drive. Uh, now, uh, 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 in mid-1993, he informed me that the team had convinced CERN to release the IPRs to the web code under an open license. And this is what, uh, let's say, uh, motivated us to, to move forward. Otherwise, uh, the, the, the idea that then evolved into the W3C uh, would, not, would not even have started. Uh, in, in February 1994, uh, Michael meets uh, Tim for a dinner in Zurich. That was, uh, let's say, a, a key turning point because that's when uh, Tim uh, accepted the invitation to visit MIT. Uh, Michael introduced him to Al Veza, who was engaged in the management of the X Consortium. In fact, he had set up the X Consortium. And uh, that's where the, the idea of creating a World Wide Web Consortium was first um, discussed. What I'm going to tell you now can also be found in Michael Dertuzos' book, What Will Be, that was published in 1997 with a foreword by Bill Gates and was actually a bestseller. So this brings us to March uh, 1994 when Michael and I met in Metsovo, Greece. Now, Metsovo, Metsovo is a very unlikely place for what actually happened there. It's, it's a tiny village of about 3,000 people at the northeastern part of Greece, uh, neighboring Albania. Uh, but it's the home, the family home of a, of a very close friend, actually, Wendy has met him, Yanis Averov, who was a, 
a member of the European Parliament all the time. So we were there as, um, as uh, guests of, of, this, of this common friend. And it was in that warm atmosphere of eating, drinking, and talking that two things happened. First, we convinced ourselves that the web could be something big and that it addressed something that we had been discussing for quite some time, namely a realization of a digital agora, uh, whereas in fifth century Athens, people could congregate to freely exchange goods as well as ideas. And uh, uh, I remember Michael telling me, this, this is, this, this can be the, the, the digital uh, agora or the e-agora. So motivated by this, we reached an agreement right there in the small village. First of all, that we would try uh, to, to set up a project uh, uh, co-financed by the United States and, um, uh, and Europe uh, we, we, that, that would set up a consortium with two hosts, MIT in the United States and CERN in the European Union. Budget roughly $1 million rate use for the younger people in the audience. That's the European Currency Units. That was the precursor of, of the euro. And the sources of financing would be DARPA in the US and the Esprit program uh, in, um, in Europe. At the time, I was the director of the European Strategic Program for Information Technologies, known as SPRI, which was the precursor of the current uh, Information Society Technologies programs. Uh, the purpose was to discuss future generations for the web and prevent from fragmentation. The structure was to be modeled after the X consortium uh, membership fee according to size. The first director, Tim Berners-Lee, Tim had already accepted this role, and first chair, Al Veza, that I mentioned earlier. So at the end of that Metsovo séjour, we had a plan. And now, of course, the question was uh, how, how, how to implement it. George, so, you're going to have to speed up a little bit. I'm so sorry. <laughs> time is going oh, so fast. <laughs> I'll, I'll finish in the next five minutes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so okay. Uh, to, to, to prepare the ground, uh, some political decisions had to be made because this was not a, a common, uh, let's say, research project, but, uh, uh, but a transatlantic cooperation that didn't fit any of the, of the existing norms. So uh, for that, I discussed with Commissioner Martin Heman, and I want to give credit to him for agreeing to support this. Uh, and, and Michael discussed with uh, uh, Vice President Al Gore, uh, who was then uh, leading the Information Highways initiatives in the US. There was a, a Bangemann Gore exchange of letters, uh, which was harmonious because Michael wrote the letters for Gore and I wrote the letters for Bangemann. So agreement was reached, and uh, the slides that follow. Uh, were in the dossier that was prepared for, for the European commissioner for his meeting with his US counterparts. These documents uh, have been digitized and I have made them available to the Web Science Trust. And I, I, I'm sure that they can be broadly available. They include the first proposal because for this to be realized, CERN had to make a proposal and, uh, and MIT had to make a proposal. This was the proposal signed by Tim, by Robert Caillot and, and Mike Sandel to the European um, Commission. And uh, my internal recommendation uh, recommends that uh, uh, what we had decided in Metsovo, namely that there are two institutions, each one uh, uh, a host. This brings us to July 1994, where a meeting took place at MIT with uh, the European Commission represented by Martin Bangemann. There was Deputy Director Adams of, of DARPA and the Director of NIST. There was a lovely uh, lunch speech by Les Thoreau, the economist who, unlike Bob Solo, uh, his colleague, uh, was not skeptical about the impact of information technologies. At the end of that day, there was a dinner and the announcement uh, that agreement had been reached was made. There was a symmetric meeting in Brussels. 
And uh, then negotiations started uh, to uh, so-called contract negotiations to finalize the contracts that would enable the World Wide Web Consortium to take place. Uh, I want to, to pay homage here to David Talbot. He was my head of unit for software uh, at the time, and he oversaw those negotiations that were not easy. They had complications, and he did that uh, very adroitly is one of those that was no longer with us then something happened as everything was sailing smoothly in december 1994 i, I get officially informed by CERN that because of uh, cuts in the new budget and the large hadron collider CERN had decided that it must concentrate on its core business and its core business did not include the web uh, so there was a bit of a frantic search for a new uh, European coast. The ground had been prepared uh, earlier. And uh, uh, when I contacted Alain Ben Susan, whom I knew because of his Sephardic roots in Salonica, which happens to be my hometown, uh, there was quick agreement uh, just before Christmas that INRIA could and would become the European host. I think it's at that point that we can say that the uh, World Wide Web Consortium was born uh, with, with uh, Tim as its first director and now Veza as its uh, chair. The project that financed all this uh, started in February 1, 1995, and this is still available in, in the EC projects database in the Europa uh, site. And the series sur le gâteau, uh, was uh, the G7 meeting in Brussels in February 19. Uh, that was organized by the European Commission, uh, Vice President Al Gore representing the United States. The main theme, the World Wide Web. And the keynote, the lovely keynote by Tabo Becky, deputy to Nelson Mandela at the time, who said that people would be empowered by technology to give themselves a voice all the world would hear. And then uh, water started flowing under the proverbial uh, bridge. I want to end with something that uh, Michael Dertuzos had said at that meeting, at the G7 meeting, that this is just, just the beginning. And he added in a proper Americanese, you ain't seen nothing yet. And I want to echo that today. I, uh, we're still at the beginning and, and, and the best and the worst uh, are yet to come. And uh, uh, after the water started flowing under the bridge, uh, quickly it brought us to September 1996, where Jean-Francois Abramatic succeeds Alveza as the chair W3C, and it's now time to pass the baton to him. Thank you.